begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Good morning. I heard today could be another hot day. I hope you guys come prepared because it's going to be in the 90, I think. However, by taking what we experience in daily life, the temperatures, the weather, the challenges that we go through life, we come to realize that there is a moment in life that we can encounter and we can ask a question that is this the moment. Is this a moment that's so dark in our life that we ask the question is that where is God? Is God still with us? And I think that precisely at that moment, we come to realize that God is always with us. God never abandoned us. And which is the experience of, of Peter in the gospel reading today, the experience that he encountered, the encounter as he walked on the water, he doubted and he began to sink. So let us, let our faith not to be sink when we face with those dark hours in our life, but rather we take that moment and we're reaching out and calling God for help. And as always, as we prepare to celebrate Eucharist, let us take a moment to ask God for mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoptions as your sons and daughters that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your sons, who live and reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings, chapter 19, verses 9a, 11 through 13a. At the mountain of God, Oreb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rendering the mountains and crushing the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ, I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who over all God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. from Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After Jesus had fed the people, Jesus made, made the disciple get into a boat and precedes him to the other side. While he dismisses the crowds, after doing so, he went, up, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat already a few miles offshore, what being tossed about the waves and the wind was against it. Then the fourth was of the night. He came toward them, walked on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. Is it a ghost? They said. And they cried out in fear. As one, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. When he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Usually I tell my communities, the redemptors here, 9 a.m. morning mass is the prime time. You get to be on the TV. 
But I guess it's, this time is uh, my prime time for 9 a.m. So which is today, instead of bringing my nieces, my nephew, my family, talking about them, probably they are watching. So I would say they be pardoned from this weekend. During my novice year in Toronto, I spent a year living in Toronto for you know, my no, novitiate. So I do have the time, a lot of time to read, besides Thomas Merton, Bernard Herring, and uh, other autobiographies. I come by, I found that the story of Dorothy, uh, Dorothy Day quite fascinating. She's current, she's contemporary, and, but there is something about her faith. Something is about her, her, her journey, her conversion story, allow us, all of us, or at least that in my opinion to me, is I can relate it to. Especially that when I was a li- uh, 15 years or 20 years ago, that's a, I can relate to at that youth, at that young, and thinking that I can do it all. As you know, Dorothy Day wasn't raised in the faith that she became t- to be. Her own, after all, is that she is enthusiastic about a- uh, atheism, intellectuals, the world that she lives in, with the support system of a- uh, atheism and the group that she belonged to. Of course, at her age, she is still in her 20. She engaged into that kind of a conversation and she met a man she married to that man because they shared the same value they said the same belief at the time and then she still, at that time she still not believe in God yet so when she got pregnant she began to realize there is something happening here something different something is changing her changing her life in her 20, thinking that there is something greater, there is something else. And yet, on the day, on the day and many days after she gave birth to her daughter, as she holding on to her infant daughter, she was so overcome with gratitude, with grace, with awe about her daughter. She began to spray spontaneously. She began to pray, pray for so much joy that she needs to thank, she needs to give thanks to somebody as that in her 20 to come to that realization. So she began to experience, she began to experience faith from a different angle, from the angle of grace, joy of her infant, of her daughter. So she began to take some instructions, some classes. She was, ba- uh, she was baptized, became Christian. And the father of her child, clearly, he did not like it. And even, and even making a statement to her that if you are going to baptize the daughter, he will leave her. So, <clears throat> as you know, what did Dorothy Day did? She baptized her daughter. And her husband left her. But not just her husband that leaving her. It's also that her friends, the support group of the atheism, intellectual world that she used to belong to, some of the people she used to call friends, good friends, close friends, began to leave her. She found herself alone. She found herself alone at the moment in her life, in her 20, widow, young daughter, infant daughter, lack of money, not a place to live, without a practical vision, what to do next. She was lost. She was at, probably at that moment in her life, in her 20. Can you imagine in her 20, and many of us, Sitting here, probably we went through that 20. At that moment in her life, the darkness that she experienced, 
the loneliness, cry out for somebody to listen to her voice, struggle to find a meaning. What's all this meant for her? So on that day, she took the train from New York, from New York down to Washington D.C. She went to Immaculate Conception Church Chapel there. She kneeled down and prayed. She prayed. She prayed for so long as she can remember until she get back up, took the train back to New York. And as she as she entered into the building of her apartment, there is a man sitting there waiting for her at the stair. His name is Peter Morin. And you know, that encounter with Dorothy Day and Peter Morin is also the beginning a new chapter, a new chapter that changing. Not just Peter Morin, not just Dorothy Day, but also for many, many lives down the road, which is the beginning of the Catholic worker founded in New York. Too many of us, the our human experience that how many times that we praying and we praying and asking and seek even more so that we demanding for answer. With our faith, but not many of us can have the answer as quick as Dorothy Day did. Not everyone, and especially that recognizing that in our life, even at different periods in our life, whether we in our teen, twenty, enter the college, graduate from high school, or even in high school, or even when we settle down into a new family. Forming a new family, even what happened at later in period in life, that we have say, "Oh my God, we have children, and they are grown up. What do we do?" At midst, in the midst of all the things happening, and we cannot deny that there is a destruction, disruption, disorientation in our life. It's so much so that we will wonder, "Where is God?" In the midst of the stormy of life, we will ask a question: Is God still with us? And here you go, from the reading from the gospel here, Peter experienced something. Peter experienced the chaos that going on, even with his faith, that he was willing to get out of the boat, come to Jesus, but doubt. There are things called destruction, disruption. Disorientation began to form, began to take over him. That is when he cried out to God and he said, "Lord, save me, save me." I think that is when, when we face with all those issues and the struggle in our life, even more so for many of us that we facing the darkness hour in our life, that we. Felt that so dark, so oppressed that we are in the corner. We feel that there is nothing left for us to turn to, nowhere else to turn to. It's so dark that we cannot even see ourselves. And I think this gospel today, pointing out for something that the disciples, in the midst of the chaos, is so dark that they cannot even recognize Jesus. Until Jesus Himself, until Jesus himself telling them, "Take courage, is it I? Do not be afraid, and do not be afraid. Do not be afraid." In the midst of that dark hour, it's so dark that we don't know what to turn to. Remember that Jesus speaking to disciples, telling them that, "Take courage, it is it is I." Do not be afraid. Peter hear his voice respond, and yet the gospel revealed to Jesus and for many of us even more clear. So, the Jesus, where we can always find faith in the midst of fears, faith will always guide us to Jesus. And I'm sure that there are times many of us we have the sinking feeling, the sinking feeling that can I get out of this? 
a sinking feeling that we are inability to move on. The thinking that, the thinking that we are inability to even try to get up to walk on the water. The inability to even thinking that we can live the next day. For some, with strong faith, with a strong support system from family, so especially with the young, the youth, such so much power, come to realize that there is always families, there is always community to support them, guide them in the midst of faith, allow them to continue to swim, stand up, get back up, and keep moving forward. For some, it's a little bit too late. For some, it's a moment, it's just a right moment that they decided there is nothing left. So they decide to take it out on themselves. My brothers and sisters, there is always light of Jesus in the dark hour of our, of our life. There is always a moment that we're going to face with a struggle that is so dark. It's so dark and so shaming that make our knees, our legs are so weak to stand. But precisely at, that, precisely at that moment, Dorothy Day reminded us that if we, stay, if we can't stand, we shall kneel. We kneel to pray, to pray and ask God for assistance, to pray that God continue to give us the strength to move on. Pray so that God continue to accompany us in each day of our life. Because with the faith, the faith that we have from our ancestors, from family, from the communities, the faith that God always and always hear the prayers. God always hear the prayers of the helplessness. Let us stand for a profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. Strengthened in faith, we come before the Lord with our knees and the knees of our sisters and brothers. For all members of the Universal Church, may they aid each other in holiness by speaking the truth in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater civility in public discourses, that all political leaders may show respect for their opponents, express their ideas and concerns thoughtfully, and work to promote the common good of society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewal of our faith, that we may keep Christ as the center of our attention and never tire of calling out for God's saving help when challenges arise. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families facing crisis, that they may hear Christ's invitation to step forward in faith and find healing and renewal as they take the hand of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing the storms of daily life, that they may keep their eyes and attention on Jesus, who strengthens us and calms our chaos. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are working to end the coronavirus, that God will give strength to all who are caring for the sick, wisdom to those searching for a cure. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Daniel Gerke and Frida and Henry Roslinick, our Mass intentions, for all those listed in our memorial mass book, for the contributors and members of our parish education endowment and foundation, and for those prayers that we hold silently in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Almighty God, give us faith and courage to cope with the storms in our lives. May we find refuge in your Son, who stretched out his hand for strength and support during all our struggles. We ask this and all our prayers in this time, our Lord and Savior, forever and ever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered and by your power to transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being, and why in this body we, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the blessed of life eternal. For having received the first fruit of the Spirit, through whom you raise up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, us in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are the Holy o Lord, the firm of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the breath of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coherent to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb.
quickly remain seated for a couple of quick announcements. As a result of the pandemic, we need to live stream our masses has become a significant element in outreach to our peers and beyond. We have started a new digital outreach ministry, which will work to enhance the quality of our video live stream efforts, as well as uh, facilitate other spiritual and community building video projects. If you have an expertise in this area, or just an interest in contributing your time to this ministry, please call the Paris office or contact Carol. If you are able to stay at the end of the Mass to help wipe the things out, it would be much appreciated. Please come up to the front and we will have the cleaning supplies ready to go. Also, we ask that you leave the kneeler down at your pew so we know where to concentrate our cleaning. Do we have any visitors today? All right. I guess we're going to go another week without visitors. Well, if you're shy, it's okay. You can always raise your hand while standing up. But if you're still shy, just let you know that you are welcome here at St. Alphonsus. We hope that our community can help you, support you in any, any way we can. Let us stand. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. <laughs>